Hey there YouTube. Today I'm going to be replacing my really really old Atwood V460 I think pump with this cartridge bilge pump. It's a Tsunami. It's a 500 GPM so it should provide the same output as the 460 did. I apologize in advance for all the shaky footage. This is in a really bad spot so it's hard to get good camera angles. First I'm going to take my cover off. There we go. Alrighty, if you look down in there, oh, it's a 450. If you look down in there, the pump uh, served me well. I've had it for like 10 years in there. I think it's probably the original, but anyway, let's get that out of there. Alright, so yours is probably still clicked into the base, whereas mine was so old it like dry rotted and like cracked off of the base. And then some gunk got into the teeth and made it so I couldn't even use the pump. But um, just a heads up, in an emergency situation, you can just uh, unbind the teeth in there. And that'll probably fix it after you replace the fuse. Um, but anyway, I'll have these waterproof connectors. The hose clamp for the uh, water discharge hose. And the zip tie for the get off me bee. Damn it. Okay. And the zip tie for the electrical. So, according to the instructions on this Atwood unit, the positive is brown, so the black is ground. That makes sense. Problem is, uh, hard to discern the colors on this one. You have to look very, very closely to see that there is a difference in between the brown and the black. If you look way down in there, you'll see there's also a base that you have to remove. Um, so it's two Phillips screws, it looks like. So I'll take that base out. Of course, I'm not going to be able to get that on camera. Since it's pretty tight in there, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the pump first. Being careful not to cut the wires, so I always cut the zip tie right here. All right, it's a lot more slack. Oh, look at that. This wire actually is worn down. You can see the bare wire. I don't know if there's a short there or not, but. These are actually like bullet connectors, the ones that click into each other. So, hmm, that's handy. So I'm gonna leave those in there since I kind of like that. And uh, I'm gonna trace this wire until it goes bad, which, let's see, right here, yeah, we'll go right here, okay, oh, ah, cool. Well, good thing the switch isn't out. Time to unscrew the old broken base that I can barely see in there. Oh, it's only slightly less uncomfortable to stand on the back. Oh. Slightly less. Where's my plate? Okay. Oh, there's some junk in there too. I might as well clean that out while I'm in there. So my carpet. Alright. Oh, some of the old plastic. Oh. Alright, try not to lose the screws. I don't know if the new one came, I don't think the new one came with screws actually. Hmm. Do not lose the screw. Okay. Second screw. Okay, and there's the plate. Alrighty, so. 
course the holes don't match the base at all so that's good to know for that reason alone it might have been nice to order a new old stock V450 but I couldn't find any okay so hose needs to go this way oh, let's make sure even fits this hose. One important thing to check that I did not. Okay, good. Whew. Um, so the, let's see how this is going to sit in there. I might go just attach this. Hose uh, clamp. New pump. fall over. Okay. Don't wear a watch when you're doing this. Damn. No. Did that just pop out or break? See if I just broke this. Okay, still good. So this base can sit in there the same way, right? Yep, have that notch straight back. Should be good to go. The right tool for the right job. Torque down the mount. Focus. Focus. When I torque down the mount, it started to fatigue the plastic. You can see the fatigue lines there. So, I think I'm going to put in one more screw because I think this mount will break just like the old one. Might not get at wood next time. Alright, since I don't have a drill bit that can go in this truck, I'm going to get a self-tapper so I can start that. Put a self-tapper down there where I want it. <clears throat> and it fell over. That wiring will be the hard part. I think it's gonna be the easy part. That base sucked. Okay, so the key to this is having these heat shrink watertight connectors. I'm gonna strip this. Looks like a 14. If that's corrosion or if these wires are tinned all the way through I think that's corrosion Ooh, wow weird 
All right, so with these connectors, all you gotta do is interweave them like so. Okay, put this over it. Alrighty, there's a little bit of solder in there. So, all you gotta do is heat that bad boy up. Wait, okay, not tangled, good. Oh, and the solder blasted. Shit, overheated it. That looks pretty good, actually. Well, there you go. Use the next bigger size. No problem. I guess these are normally held with plugs, so I, <laughs> DC 12 volts, not a big deal. Oh, make sure that doesn't shrink, as I. still hot, so I'll give that a second. There's the solder flowing. Nice. All right, while that one cools, I'll go do the heat shrink on this one. Double heat shrink. All right, let's go flip the switch, make sure the motor actually runs. All right. Sure you could have trimmed these wires down if you wanted to. I like to leave an extra wire, just in case you're troubleshooting out on the lake. All right, now hopefully this thing just clicks in. All right, in we go.
Okay, shit. All right, so I actually had to take that out and remount the base because it was hitting the side of the gas tank. The top of the pump is bigger than the bottom of the pump, and you don't think about that when you're putting it in the base. So keep that in mind, but now it's mounted. Time to test it. Ah, that's good to see. Alrighty, thanks for watching.